Welcome to Todd's Two Minute Tech Tip Tuesday, brought to you by Big Beard Battery. Visit BigBeardBattery.com. Go ahead and hit the subscribe button. That way you don't miss anything. Hit the subscribe button now. Thank you. Hey, this week, let's answer the top five questions you have asked over the last couple of weeks. So let's go ahead and get started. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and read these word for word. No, I'm not. Some of these are like paragraph long, but I'm going to try it. Hey, great video. Hey, there we go. It's a good way to get this stuff answered. Great videos, but I have a question for you. No one can give me an answer. Well, you come to the right place. I'll give you an answer. Now, whether it's right or not, I don't know. But let's see here. I have a Class A RV, uh, and it was given a lithium battery, and now he wants to install it. I was told that I need to get a lithium converter charger. Is what he's saying. Um, he was an auto mechanic, and if you remove, he says, I was an auto mechanic. Okay, thank you. Uh, what if I remove the charging wires, install the battery, and only charge it with the solar that I have, or by a generator or shore power? All right, so a generator or shore power produces 120 volts. You still need a charger to charge your batteries at 12 volts, and so a converter. Mm -hmm takes 120 volts and steps it down to 12 volts. But let me go ahead and answer what's going on. The nominal voltage of a lithium battery is higher than that of a um, lead acid battery. A fully charged lead acid battery, 12.7 volts. And so we set our chargers to charge a lead acid battery. Now, typically in order to charge a lead acid battery, we need the charger to produce just a little bit more voltage to fully charge that battery. So 13.2 or 13.6. His question is, he's got a lithium battery, and a lithium battery fully charged produces about 14.6 volts. So you see the problem. If he just takes the lithium battery and puts it in place of his lead acid battery, he's never going to get a full charge, right? Because his current converter inside the RV is set for 13.6, right? So he's asking the question, hey, I, I think I know I need to switch out the converter, but I don't have, I don't want to spend the extra money for it. The question is, is, well, can I just have the solar panels maybe do a top charge, what we call a top charge, charge it up, right? Or can I just charge it up by shore power or, you know, um, the generator? Well, by doing that, you're still using the existing converter. You can charge it up maybe 50, 60 percent. Yes, the solar panels, depending on Sunstrike, depending on how many solar panels you have up there, can deliver the top charge, okay? It can do it. Over how long? Don't know, okay? So it all depends on what you're using that lithium battery for. Is it connected to an inverter where you're actually really gonna drain it? Or is it just there to run your 12 volt stuff? If it's just there to run your 12 volt stuff, yeah, go ahead and let just your solar panels. Make sure that with your solar controller that you can change that to charge a lithium battery or 14.4, 14.4 volts. I don't like 14.6 because you never really should charge it up all the way. However, look at the lithium battery you have. You got to dig, do some digging, find out what they require in order to get what's called the top balance. So if they do say 14.6, go ahead and put it there. Okay. So there's some considerations. Yes, it can be done. Are you getting 100% use out of that battery? No. And will you ever be able to balance them without some other source? No. And the question again is, hey, look, if I just want to move over to lithium, what are my considerations? I'm going to tell you, yeah, you do need to switch out that converter to a lithium-capable battery charger. But I also understand that money, you know, doesn't grow on trees, especially in this economy. Can the solar panels help out? Yes, for a little bit, okay? And depending on your situation, it may be perfect. If you're really using that battery, you're going to find out you're not getting the full usage out of that lithium battery. The next one, I bought a brand new Jayco trailer. The problem, period. When I took it home, period. The next morning, comma, the battery was dead. Man, you love periods. I plugged into my Tahoe to take it to the dealer the next day. I charged the battery up first. The next morning, not only was the trailer battery dead, but the Tahoe battery was dead. The dealer says about seven weeks to fix. My goodness. What do you think's wrong? Well, what I think is wrong is seven weeks to chase down a problem. That's your first problem, right? It doesn't take seven weeks, okay? Now, let's just go over this. 
You put a new battery in, the very next day it's dead. The only way that battery's gonna die, if it's good, is that there is something in the RV draining that battery. Okay, that's the first thing, first thing to look at. So I know that you probably thought to yourself, I've turned everything off, but there is a drain, a parasitic load of some sort pulling from that battery. And I think it's more than a parasitic load. The question is, do you have a 12 volt refrigerator? Possibly, mm, it's going there. Okay, so I would check that. Now, having a multimeter with an amp clamp, a DC amp clamp, it's real simple. Turn everything off and then I would do an amp clamp on the positive or negative and see if there's an amp draw. If there's an amp draw, that confirms there is something draining the battery. Now, for the next thing, you hooked up a Tahoe, right? Not a truck, mm -hmm. a Tahoe. You hook that up, okay? It depends on the year. You said you charged it up first. Now, um, you don't say what type of battery this is. Let's see here, ba 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 ba. Probably a lead acid. Did you know it takes anywhere from eight to 12 hours to fully charge a lead acid battery? You said you charged it up, which means you had to run the Tahoe for eight to 12 hours, which I don't think you did. Now, you might've plugged it in shore power and you said, Todd, I used the converter inside the RV, possibly, okay? So my first question is, is how did you charge it up? You may have thought that you were charging it going down the road, which you do a little bit, but you're not driving eight to 12 hours more than likely. The fact is now the Tahoe battery is dead. Hmm. Okay. Depending on the age of your Tahoe, okay? Yes, your starter battery, if the truck is off, if the truck is off, which means you're not using the alternator, yes, the starter battery will drain because the starter battery voltage is slightly higher than a deep cycle battery voltage, right? So it may just go ahead and drain it. Now, it probably didn't completely drain it. It just drained off the top charge, right? You had to hit it with a charger just for a little bit, starts back up, probably works just fine, okay? But here's the thing, seven freaking weeks for them to find the problem. That means that they're not even getting to it till the seventh week, okay? And to me, that's the biggest problem. But I mean, it's, it's probably nothing wrong with the battery. First and foremost, we do the simple stuff first. Is there a drain coming off of that battery? If so, we gotta figure out what's draining it, turn it off and fix the problem there. All right, uh, let's see here. Todd, here's a question. How come fifth wheels don't come with have dualies? Wait, let me read that sentence again. How come fifth wheels don't have dualies? Oh, well, overly simple. A dually, which means, you know, you got your tires side by side, instead of being a tandem axle. Now, let's think about this. Tandem and triple axles, all the wheels are right outside the periphery of the frame. When you go with a dually, that means you have two tires, um, one in top, inside the other, which means your frame has to be closer set in. Now, there was uh, there was a couple duallys that were out there. Uh, as a matter of fact, we have, there was a fifth wheel with a dually system back in the 90s, and it was pretty cool, okay? Not only was it a tandem axle, it was dually. I mean, this thing was heavy, but you needed a Ford to pull it, okay? So it has to do with the spacing up underneath. You know, to put a dually in there, that means your frame's gonna be moved in, changes all kinds of physics with how we have oh, our frame oh, set up, yeah. or oh, they have mm -hmm. to etch it out. Yeah, yeah, just simply yeah. doesn't work. Mm -hmm. Real simple on that one. Can it be done? Sure, but you gotta hire an engineer. All right, uh, let's see here. Question, what about the opposite temperature extreme? Now, didn't supply the preface, but I was talking about cold weather and lithium batteries. So the question is, what about the opposite temperature extreme? Uh, storing lithium batteries in a climate where the upper, where the climate, hmm, I love the way you guys develop your sentences. Storing lithium batteries in a climate where it is in the upper 90s, and low 100s, can the extreme heat cause damage to lithium batteries? Now, brother, I'm a Texan. 90s is not extreme, okay? That's like an that's like springtime, right? Extreme, okay. Extreme is something like 108. All right, but let me get, so here's the first thing. All batteries, all batteries, all batteries have a problem with heat, okay? Heat destroys the longevity of all batteries. It doesn't matter with the type, brand, anything else. Heat destroys the longevity. Heat is actually a resistor in most cases when it comes to electricity. 
heat is the enemy to electricity, right? So yes, that is true. However, you said storing, letting it store there, okay? Less of a problem. Now, that is less of a problem, still a problem, right? Heat destroys all things, right? You're also your RV. If you were storing it outside in 90 degree weather, 100 degree weather, you're going to have more problem with all the glue, right? Your upholstery, uh, your walls, all the lamination, all of that. Worst thing you can do is store that RV out in direct sunlight, not use it, which means you don't have the air conditioner on and stuff like that. Yes, heat is a problem right? This is why we recommend for most lithium batteries, we try and put it somewhere in the storage area to reduce the heat because, of course, most of the storage areas, depending on where which storage area you're using, we can also air condition it, right? So, yes, if you want your batteries to last a lot longer, find a place to put them where it's not so extreme. And the only ones you can do that with is lithium batteries. All other batteries, even sealed Lead acid batteries, which is an oxymoron, they've got vents on there. Those we have to store outside, but with lithium batteries, we can store on the inside, which makes them last, gives them a little bit better temperature control. Last question. Number five, we're 12 minutes into this thing. Um, fantastic video. Not kidding, that's what it said. Uh, one question not covered. What, really? It's two minutes. There's probably a lot more than one question I don't cover. How do you test for a broken, missing, or open neutral at the pedestal? Well, you come to my class and I go over in detail, but I'll go ahead and explain it. My surge protector says that the, um, there's a problem and I won't allow, uh, and it won't allow any power to pass through. God, y'all senses. I'd like to know how to check it before uh, I plug in from now on. Well, first off, if you have an EMS or something like that surge protector and it tells you have an open neutral, chances are you have an open neutral, okay? Um, the way to verify that though is you have to be pretty proficient with your multimeter, all right? So here's the thing. You have to identify which is, you know, your neutral uh, slot in whatever you're connecting to, okay? So let's go over this. On a 30 amp slot, this is what it looks like. You got two slots that look like this and then you got a round slot right up top. We know round is ground. The left side, in America, the left side will always be the hot slot, which means the neutral is on the right side, okay? What you have to do is you have to test it, two or three tests with the multimeter. Ooh, I don't even know if I should be going over this. All right, that's a tough one, okay? Because I'll do it, all right. So you first have to verify you have voltage. So you can go across between, use your multimeter, set it on volts AC. You take one probe and you put it in the hot slot. You take one probe and put it in the neutral slot. If it's open, you're gonna see zero volts showing up on that multimeter. Now, that could mean the power is off, the breaker is off or anything else. So you're gonna do a second test. You're gonna take the probe out of the neutral and stick it in the ground, okay? If you stick it in the ground, so you got one probe in the ground and one probe on the hot side and you see 120 volts, boom, boom, you've got power coming in, you've got a path back. That would confirm for me one of two things. I have an open neutral or I'm miswired, okay? Open neutral or miswired. If you have a 50 amp service, you got four slots. You got two side by side, one that's subset below, and then you got your round up top. Round, ground, okay? Your left and right, that's split phase, you're gonna have 120 volts on each side. So between here and between here, you're either gonna get something like 208 or 240. If you take one of the probes out and stick it in the bottom, which is your neutral, boom, you lose voltage. Could be an indicator that you have an open neutral. How to verify that? Go up and connect to the ground now. So you still have the one connected to one of the hots. By the way, both sides are your hots, okay? You go between the hot side and the ground, 120 volts. Let's do this hot side and ground, 120 volts. But on either case, when you come down between the hot and the neutral and you see zero volts, you have verified you have an open neutral. But quite honestly, let me tell you, don't try and outsmart these EMSs. It's simple logic that they put in there and if they tell you you have an open ground, chances are you have an open ground, okay? Don't be smarter than that is. You can plug in stuff will work for a little bit until these electrons figure out there's no path home and they're gonna mess up one of your appliances and it's gonna be the first in the chain, 
right? One of the things that's closest in the chain. It's going to find its way back and it's going to mess up whatever it is. It could be an air conditioner. It could be your converter. It happens, right? Trust the EMS. And there's your tech tips. Hey, this week, going to go ahead and <laughs> nothing on those. Okay, two more. Wait, that was two questions, right? I'm missing one. I'm missing one. I said five. Oh, here it goes. Here's the last two questions. Here we go. Wait. Didn't I answer that? Yeah. Uh, of what's being done. I'm sorry. Let's just do this. Wrong page. Well, we'll just skip all that. That's right. That was three. All right. Here we go. Great videos. Man, that was long. That was two minutes right there. But I said five. Hope y'all are ready because that's a long video.